The factory is the machine that builds the machine. Man has the power to act as his own destroyer, and that is the way he has acted through most of his history. As you heat the planet up, it's just like boiling a pot. America is the spirit of human exploration distilled. I'm reasonably optimistic about the future, especially the future of the United States, for the century, at least. The key to making things affordable is design and technology improvements, as well as scale. I tend to approach things from a physics framework. And physics teaches you to reason from first principles rather than by analogy. I do think there is a lot of potential if you have a compelling product and people are willing to pay a premium for that. I think that is what Apple has shown. You can buy a much cheaper cell phone or laptop, but Apple's product is so much better than the alternative, and people are willing to pay that premium. The future of humanity is going to bifurcate in two directions, either it's going to become multiplanetary, or it's going to remain confined to one planet and eventually there's going to be an extinction event. If you don't have sustainable energy, you have unsustainable energy. The fundamental value of a company like Tesla is the degree to which it accelerates the advent of sustainable energy faster than it would otherwise occur. If you think back to the beginning of cell phones, laptops or really any new technology, it's always expensive. The United States is definitely ahead in culture of innovation. If someone wants to accomplish great things, there is no better place than the US. My vision is for a fully reusable rocket transport system between Earth and Mars that is able to refuel on Mars, this is very important, so you don't have to carry the return fuel when you go there. I had so many people try to talk me out of starting a rocket company, it was crazy. It's not as though we can keep burning coal in our power plants. Coal is a finite resource, too. We must find alternatives, and it's a better idea to find alternatives sooner than wait until we run out of coal, and in the meantime, put God knows how many trillions of tons of CO2 that used to be buried underground into the atmosphere. The reason we should do a carbon tax is because it's the right thing to do. It's Economics 101, Elementary Stuff. Trying to read our DNA is like trying to understand software code, with only 90% of the code riddled with errors. It's very difficult in that case to understand and predict what that software code is going to do. Biofuels such as ethanol require enormous amounts of cropland and end up displacing either food crops or natural wilderness, neither of which is good. A utility can handle up to 20% of production from solar and that helps the grid because it produces electricity when needed. Solar power peaks in the middle of the day and that's also when air conditioning is running and businesses are operating, so power production matches usage. Land on Mars, a round trip ticket, half a million dollars. It can be done. Winning Motor Trend Car of the Year is probably the closest thing to winning the Oscar or Emmy of the car industry. Nobody wants to buy a $60,000 electric Civic. But people will pay $90,000 for an electric sports car. The Space Shuttle was often used as an example of why you shouldn't even attempt to make something reusable. But one failed experiment does not invalidate the greater goal. If that was the case, we'd never have had the light bulb. I'm glad to see that BMW is bringing an electric car to market. That's cool. I've been to Disneyland, like, 10 times. I'm getting really tired of Disneyland. If anyone thinks they'd rather be in a different part of history, they're probably not a very good student of history. Life sucked in the old days. People knew very little, and you were likely to die at a young age of some horrible disease. You'd probably have no teeth by now. It would be particularly awful if you were a woman. What most people know but don't realize they know is that the world is almost entirely solar powered already. If the sun wasn't there, we'd be a frozen ice ball at 3 degrees Kelvin, and the sun powers the entire system of precipitation. The whole ecosystem is solar powered. Boeing just took $20 billion in 10 years to improve the efficiency of their planes by 10%. That's pretty lame. I have a design in mind for a vertical liftoff supersonic jet that would be a really big improvement. A battery by definition is a collection of cells. So the cell is a little kind of chemicals. And the challenge is taking a very high energy cell, and a large number of them, and combining them safely into a large battery. I've actually not read any books on time management. In order to have your voice be heard in Washington, 
you have to make some little contribution. I don't spend my time pontificating about high concept things, I spend my time solving engineering and manufacturing problems. My opinion is it's a bridge too far to go to fully autonomous cars. I'm a Silicon Valley guy, I just think people from Silicon Valley can do anything. If you want to grow a giant redwood, you need to make sure the seeds are okay, nurture the sapling, and work out what might potentially stop it from growing all the way long. Anything that breaks it at any point stops that growth. You could warm Mars up, over time, with greenhouse gases. Generally, the view that I've had on Twitter is if you're on Twitter, you're in. Like, the meme, you're in meme war land. If you're on Twitter, you're in the arena. And so, essentially, if you attack me, it is therefore okay for me to attack back. With DNA, you have to be able to tell which genes are turned on or off. Current DNA sequencing cannot do that. The next generation of DNA sequencing needs to be able to do this. If somebody invents this, then we can start to very precisely identify cures for diseases. It is definitely true that the fundamental enabling technology for electric cars is lithium ion as a cell chemistry technology. In the absence of that, I don't think it's possible to make an electric car that is competitive with a gasoline car. I think there are more politicians in favor of electric cars than against. There are still some that are against, and I think the reasoning for that varies depending on the person, but in some cases, they just don't believe in climate change, they think oil will last forever. If you had to buy a new plane every time you flew somewhere, it would be incredibly expensive. Stationary storage will be as big as the car business long term. The growth rate will probably be several times what it is for the car business. I just want to retire before I go senile because if I don't retire before I go senile, then I'll do more damage than good at that point. The odds of me coming into the rocket business, not knowing anything about rockets, not having ever built anything, I mean, I would have to be insane if I thought the odds were in my favor. I usually describe myself as an engineer, that's basically what I've been doing since I was a kid. I hate writing about personal stuff. I don't have a Facebook page. I don't use my Twitter account. I am familiar with both, but I don't use them. I was born in Africa. I came to California because it's really where new technologies can be brought to fruition, and I don't see a viable competitor. Particularly Instagram, people look like they have a much better life than they really do. People basically seem like they are way better looking than they really are, and they are way happier seeming than they really are. In order for us to have a future that's exciting and inspiring, it has to be one where we're a space-bearing civilization. It is true that SpaceX is partially a government contractor, but it would be unfair to say that SpaceX is entirely a government contractor. We are the first species capable of self-annihilation. If you look at space companies, they've failed either because they've had a technical solution where success was not a possible outcome, they were unable to attract a critical mass of talent, or they just ran out of money. The finish line is usually a lot further away than you think. The goal of Tesla is to accelerate sustainable energy, so we're going to take a step back and think about what's most likely to achieve that goal. There are really two things that have to occur in order for a new technology to be affordable to the mass market. One is you need economies of scale. The other is you need to iterate on the design. You need to go through a few versions. I'd like to dial it back 5% or 10% and try to have a vacation that's not just email with a view. From an evolutionary standpoint, human consciousness has not been around very long. A little light just went on after four and a half billion years. How often does that happen? Maybe it is. I like the word autopilot more than I like the word self-driving. Self-driving sounds like it's going to do something you don't want it to do. Autopilot is a good thing to have in planes, and we should have it in cars. If we could do high-speed rail in California just half a notch above what they've done on the Shanghai Line in China, and if we had a straight path from LA to San Francisco, as well as the Milk Run, at least that would be progress. I've actually made a prediction that within 30 years a majority of new cars made in the United States will be electric. And I don't mean hybrid, I mean fully electric. A battery by definition is a collection of cells. So the cell is a little kind of chemicals. And the challenge is taking a very high energy cell, and a large number of them, and combining them safely into a large battery. 